Hello guys, this is Code and Code, and this is 29th lecture of Number Theory series, and yep, this is also the 300th lecture of my channel. So, congratulations to me on this. Now, of course, I'll be providing you a way where you can watch a, a free Mobius inversion lecture. Uh, if you are here only because of this, you can simply skip and watch last two minutes of this video. So, in this lecture, we are going to study about linear Diophantine equations. And this lecture, if you have fallen, uh, if you only want to study this, then you might want to make sure that you already understand extended Euclidean algorithm because this, the LDA, will be solving using uh, extended Euclidean algorithm, which I have all already uh, taught in, I guess, lecture 26, 27, uh, in previous lecture of number theory series. So make sure you have watched extended Euclidean algorithm before watching this one. So. So the lecture outline, uh, I mean, there will be a series of lectures because there are things which uh, all of the things I cannot cover in a single video. Otherwise, this would be this video would be roughly one or one and a half hour long. So what are the things that we are going to study? First of all, what are linear Diophantine equations? Second, finding solution of LDA. We'll be also studying uh, what is the general solution of LDA or finding all solution and finding the solution finding the number of solution and also the solution in a given range so you'll be providing a ray you'll be provided with the range of x and y and you will be asked to find the total number of solution or you maybe you are required to print all of the so solution in the given range and also we'll, we'll be solving we'll be studying this as well how you can find the solution where summation of x or uh, sum of x and y coordinates x and y value is minimum Sources are cplgorithm.com and brilliant.org. Link of both I'll be providing in the uh, video description. So let's continue. So what are LDA or linear Diophantine equations? So linear uh, Diophantine equations or LDAs in two variables are the equation of the form ax plus by is equals to c, where a, b and c are known variables and x and y are unknown. And the problem is to find out the coefficients x and y. So example can be 5x plus 3y is equals to 24, uh, 2x minus 8y is equals to 0 and so on. So these are LDAs and main purpose of the algorithm is to find the solution x and y which satisfy this equation. Depending upon the variables, uh, sorry, depending upon the values of a, and a, b and c, there may be 0 infinite or, or finite number of solution for LDA. Now, before when you are going to solve the problem, first thing that most people uh, make wrong decision. I mean, first thing that most people uh, this thing slips through their mind. They do not take care of degenerate case when you are solving this problem, and there is certain penalty for wrong uh, wrong submission. Then th this may cost you uh, like twenty minutes if for one wrong submission. This is I guess on court forces. So. Uh, nevertheless, if there is penalty for wrong submission, then you might want to take uh, special. Uh, you are, you might want to take special care of this condition, the degenerate case where a and b are zero. So depending upon the value of c, there are two cases. If c is equals to zero, then there are infinite solution because no matter what value of x and y you choose, since a and b are already zero, so no matter what values of x and y you choose, the resultant is going to be zero always. So that is why if c is equals to zero, the total number of solutions are infinite. If c is not equal to zero, the total number of solutions are going to be zero because no matter what values of a and b you choose, oh, sorry, x and y you choose, uh, the result is always going to zero and on the right hand side we have non-zero value so zero will, is not equal to non-zero number so of course total number of solution will be zero so always make sure when you are solving uh, finding the solution of LDA make sure you you have taken care of the degenerate case now let's continue for the original equation now <clears throat> sorry so uh, to solve the equation the LDA what we are going to do, we are going to utilize extended Euclidean algorithm as I have told you in the beginning of this lecture. So I am assuming that you have knowledge of extended Euclidean algorithm. So how extended Euclidean algorithm is going to help us find the solution? See, extended Euclidean algorithm uh, can be used to find the solution of the equation of type ax plus by is equal to g, right? Where g is gcd of a and b. 
Now, we want the solution of ax plus by is equal to c, not ax plus by is equal to g. So, of course, we have to make, we have to find the solution of this and make certain transitions, right, to find the solution of this. So, how we are going to do this? See, if x0 and y0 are solution of this equation, which you can find using extended Euclidean algorithm, which I have already told how you can, which I have already taught, taught how you can find the solution how you can use extended Euclidean algorithm and find the solution of this equation. Suppose you have found the solution and the so solution comes out to be x0 and y0, right? So the solution of this equation, the original equation that we want to solve would be x would be uh, x0 times c by g, y0 times c by g, where c is already provided in the input and g is the GCD of a and b. Now the question is why is that so? If the solution of this equation is x0 and y0, why the solution of this equation is c by g, uh, x0 times c by g and y0 times c by g. Why is that so? Let me show you why. Now, so again, x0, y0 solution of this equation. So, solution of this equation, let's derive. So, since x0 and y0 are solution of this equation, let's replace x and y by x0 and y0. So, ax0, uh, plus by0 is equal to g, right? Nothing special there. Multiply the whole equation by uh, with c by g. So the right handed uh, right hand side of equation is multiplied by c by g. Similarly, the left hand side is multiplied with c by g. Now when you multiply right hand side with c by g, only c will be there. And the right, uh, sorry, the right hand side would be c and the left hand side would be something like this. If you compare these two equations, you see on the right hand side is having c so and on the left hand side we are having a times x where here we are having a times x naught time c by g right so if you compare these two equation you can see that x the solution of this equation x is equals to x naught time c by g and for y it is y naught time c by g that is why we are having solution of original lda as x x zero time c by g and y zero time c by g so I hope you have understood why the solution is like this. Now the question is proof of existence of solution. How can you be so sure that solution of this equ equation actually exists? So the next step is that. Now uh, solution existence proof, one of the most important thing I believe. See we have seen where we were studying extended Euclidean algorithm that a uh, solution of this equation uh, consider this ax plus by right so solution of equation ax plus by is equal to g again g is gcd so ax plus by uh, by is equal to g always exists the integer solution we are talking about so integer solution of this equation always exists how we were so sure of that uh, this uh, the proof of this is simply uh, bezos identity we have solution of this now what makes you so sure the solution of this always exists or what is the condition by which you can be sure that solution of this equation actually exists because Bezos identity will uh, will basically prove this this claim that solution of this equation exists but not this because on the right hand side for Bezos identity you have to have GCD of A comma B but here we are having AX plus B is equal to C where C may or may not be the GCD of A and B. See, I want you to take this equation in con uh, into consideration uh, give special emphasis on right hand side and try to think what would be the condition for the integer solution of this equation or you can think about these because these are our solution right uh, for equation ax plus by is equals to c these are actually our solution right x is equals to x naught times c by g and y is equals to y naught times c by g so we are claiming that uh, x naught times c by g should be an integer similarly y naught times c by g should be an integer now, if x0 times c by g needs to be an integer, then c must be divisible by g. If c is not divisible by g, this c by g will not be an integer and of course that would be a fraction and product of integer times fraction is going to be fraction. So of course the solution will not be integer. So c must be divisible by g. 
so this is important condition for solution to exist of this equation ax plus by is equals to c c must be divisible by the gcd of a and b if c is not divisible by gcd of a and b then solution does not exist by solution i mean integer solution because we are here to find the integer solution of ldas now one may argue that okay it is possible that c by uh, c is not divisible uh, divisible by g but x not times c is divisible by g similarly y not times c is divisible by g for example if x not was 2 c was 3 and g is also 2 so 2 times th uh, 3 by 2 of course 3 is not divisible by 2 but 3 times 2 by 2 is actually divisible basically x not is divisible by g so if x not is divisible by g then the result would be integer right so one may argue that but you can prove it that this would not happen uh, you can utilize this equation i'm not going to prove that it is easy in fact i'm leaving this as an exercise for you to prove that that would not happen it is not possible that x divides both x not uh, sorry g divides both x not and y not and uh, g doesn't divide c it will not happen you can prove it just utilize this equation and utilize the fact that x naught and y naught are both divisible by g and prove it using contradiction you can do that i believe you uh, i'm not going to do this because leaving this as an exercise so the condition is for sol integer solution to exist c must be divisible by gcd of a and b so now we have proof as well and condition now the last thing is for those who wanted to know the who wanted to study mobius inversion so for that you can go to of course this link unacademy.com slash goal slash competitive programming slash learn cp you can buy subscription or you can watch this lecture for free so you want to watch the lecture uh the mobius inversion lecture you can check out the competitive programming free lectures go to see all when you click on see all you'd be uh you'll be taken to this page where you can find all of the free lecture for competitive programming where you can find uh, mobius inversion there are many other lecture which you can watch for free if you feel like uh, these lectures are good enough for you to invest your money you can of course go for the subscription one month six months or 12 months if you apply my code uh, you can get 10 percent off and for the one month subscription you get it only for 1000 if you apply my code uh, nevertheless so you can watch mobius inversion lecture there are two lectures mobius inversion lecture and then there is a uh, solving problem using mobius inversion lecture you can go there and you can watch the lecture yourself so this was all for this lecture thank you guys for watching and till the next video drops keep going thank you